an event, uh, which is the O3B uh, story. I'd like to welcome um, from O3B Charles Hammerford and John Leckie, who will be uh, talking about their company. Um, but I'm really delighted to welcome as well the chairman and founder of O3B, Mr. John Dick, who is here with us. Um, unexpectedly, but uh, delighted to have you here tonight, John. Thank you very much. For those of you who don't know John, John is an unbelievably successful entrepreneur who originally hails from Canada and has been living in the island for over 30 years and is a, not only a successful, very successful business person, but is a huge supporter of um, many charities in the, in the island. Uh, we're delighted that John could join us tonight. John, thank you. Um, we have had some excellent uh, sessions here at the Hub, uh, but I wonder if any of them would be quite quite as staggering as the story you will hear tonight. Staggering in the scale of the investment. We're talking about a company that is providing uh, broadband telecommunications through medium uh, Earth orbit satellite. Gentlemen, I hope I got that little bit yes, of technology sir, correct. Um, staggering level of investment. Equally staggering that we have this brilliant, world-class company here in Jersey, and O3B is proud to be a Jersey company. And not to mix my metaphor, we have a satellite company flying well and truly under the radar, um, and it's time that we took them out of stealth mode and recognized them as being an, an essential part of the fabric of Jersey. But lastly, staggering, because here's a company that isn't a satellite telecommunications company, but has this unbelievably glorious vision of connecting the other three billion, O3B, people around the world that don't have access to the kinds of telecommunications, internet services that we all take for granted. I think this is a truly amazing, gratifying story. Gentlemen, we're delighted to have you here tonight. Thank you. Um, so, could everyone hear me through starting? So, Paul, thank you very much for, for, for that introduction, and uh, yeah, I hope I can live up to the hype of, uh, of, of that, certainly. Um, so, uh, in terms of my presentation, I, I've called it here the only be a Jersey story, and I think in sort of typical Britishness, I think I've understated it um, somewhat. I, and I, I, I think really it is a Jersey success story, and. Um, Hopefully, after after the presentation today, you, you, you would agree with me, and we can debate it. Um, but, uh, but certainly, I feel, and, and, and we all feel, we know three people that we are successful. Um, so, my presentation is, is sort of in three parts, really. The first part being sort of proving the story and a bit about how we started up as a company and, and, uh, and a video to go with that. Um, the second bit is really about how. O3B works and what it is. Um, and the third bit being about the market and, uh, and, and some of our customers and customer testimonies uh, that, that we've got here uh, to show you. Um, additionally, I've got my colleague here, John Leckie. Um, so John is, is our uh, legal counsel at O3B. And uh, so he's going to come and talk to you about uh, the whole financing of O3B. And he, he's been involved from sort of start to finish in, in terms of uh, how we've been able to, to get where we are today. So, so John's going to come and, uh, and, and present after me. Much more briefly, though. We'll do the interesting stuff in some detail. <laughs> corporate finance will be limited. So, um, I just want to show you show you the video of, of sort of the O3B story, um, and, uh, and, and it's really to kick off, and it, it sort of summarises really where O3B has sort of come from, and and where O3B is is today, and. And I think from that, it'll sort of give you a sense of, uh, of what's been achieved so far, but then we will also be talking about what, what it, more is there to come. So, if you look at historically in the world, a lot of times conflicts start out of people not communicating. The internet isn't just social media. This is a fundamental tool that people use to do business. We, on the West, we took it for granted that when we want something, we 
Google it, then we get it. And then you go to a country where there's no connectivity, somebody is sitting there and does not the information, it does impact his life, his health, his learning. Greg and I were involved in Rwanda purely out of altruistic reasons. We were there shortly after the genocide trying to help that country again. So we got involved in establishing a fiber optic spine in the country. We had really trouble getting good signal strength and it was very expensive. The idea that Greg came up with was an effort to solve those problems. You know, I always question, like, hey, why aren't you bringing water? Why are you doing, you know, why aren't you bringing uh, food and, and helping in those places? It's like, well, you got eight million people, you can't bring water at all unless you have a logistics system. You need the internet. I said it's not. And it showed all the fiber cables going from New York to London, and then it goes from London, and then to London, and then to California, and Tokyo, and you can see all these fiber cables around the globe. It's a lot, it's a lot of fiber. And then I have the different color shading for the other three billion. So the other three billion don't have any of this stuff. They don't have any connectivity. The seed came from that core thought, I think. The company challenged itself, well, if we could figure out a way to provide internet service that's fiber-like using a satellite system, how would we do it? We're launching a constellation, which means that we will keep launching satellites into the same orbit, but this is the first four. This is when we really start our operational phase. People, when we first started, looked at the system and the complexity of putting it together globally, the timeline we wanted to implement it on, and thought we were crazy. <laughs> If there's a lot of money going into this, why aren't you putting it into bringing, you know, into retroviral therapies or into malaria things? Oh, they're just a bunch of cowboys and, you know, they're risk takers and, and I don't mind that cliche, if you will. Five years ago is nuts. Is today's like, yeah, of course you're launching some satellites and they're going to have a bunch of bandwidth. If it's not nuts, it's not good enough. When you think of it, how often do you get a chance to be part of something that really is going to be world changing? So those guys basically living, living a dream. It's not about us, it's about getting internet connectivity, the lifeblood to economic growth for the rest of the world. So we're going to Kourou, which is a small place in the middle of French Guiana, so on the northeast coast of South America. From there we're going to launch four satellites, which I fundamentally believe will change the world. I knew that this was a company that, if I worked here, I wouldn't get any better. There wasn't any other company or any, any other thing that I wanted to do. Even when I was young, I could never imagine that I, I, I could be here on site and say, okay, we are launching this rocket. You understand? It's something like two tablet tons that will fly in kilometers per second up to an orbit where the spacecraft will be separated. Uh, it's, of course, it's fascinating, yeah. We picked Task Media Space, we've been building satellites this for years and years and years. We picked Ariane Space, who've launched successfully countless times, and we've picked the most reliable rocket in the world, but even still. We've got five years of work in these satellites, spent a billion plus dollars on them, and now we're putting them on this rocket. It's nerve wracking a little bit, I, I'll admit. We were up at six in the morning, we took a school group out to see the Soyuz, saw our rocket for the first time with the O3D logo on the ferry. It was real after all that time. It's like, hey, this is really happening. Rockets vertical, fairings on it. We're here. This is it. Right? It's, we're launching. where we launched the first satellite of the new call. We are in space, 
we have the opportunity to do that a lot because we understand our business is a long-term business. If what will be successful, I am this will be successful and any other customer. Man, this is it. I am speechless. So, I mean, I, I, I've seen that probably 15, 20 times. It still makes the hairs on the back of my neck uh, stick up. And, uh, and, and, and you sort of see Greg, the, the, the founder there, and he sort of epitomizes O3P with the enthusiasm that, that, that he drives into the, uh, into the organization. And, 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 and that is a, a sort of a common theme within O3P today. And, uh, and, I, and you sort of look back there and, and and, and actually, O3B sort of started out not to be a, a, a satellite company. We, we, we started out to solve a problem. And the problem was connecting the people that didn't have internet connectivity today. The medium that we've chosen to do that by is, is through satellite. Um, we could have chosen other mediums to do it, but it was satellite that, that got us that, that reach and the depth and breadth of, of, of coverage that we needed to do to fulfill the objective, which was connect the other the other three billion people that, that don't have connectivity today. Um, so uh, I'll sort of now move on to, to a bit about sort of how, uh, how O3B works. Um, and I'm sort of not going to get too technical here. So um, A, because I'm not a technical person, and, and, and B, because once you sort of start this, you, you, you can just go for hours, quite frankly. Um, after all, this is space and everyone wants to be an astronaut. Right? Um, so, uh, so, so <coughs> essentially, we have three components to the O3B network. And those components are, one, the satellites, two, the equipment on the ground in order to, to receive the, the, the service from the satellites, and the third part being the, the customer equipment. So the equipment that our customers need in order to receive service. So in terms of the satellites, um, each satellite has 12 beams on it, so you, you can see the, see the beams up in, up in the corner there. Um, ten of those are customer beams, and, uh, and two of those are, are beaming the, the, the service back to the gateway. Um, with the service, we have a, uh, a coverage of plus or minus 45 degrees of the equator. So our orbit is an equatorial orbit, so we are, we are right in the center. Um, and, uh, and, and, and each of the beams is, uh, is essentially over 10 times the, the capacity of what can be achieved today um, through traditional satellite, geostationary uh, satellites. So what we see is, uh, is sort of high throughput services, services that, that haven't been seen in, in, in the market today, whether it be satellite or, or, or the connectivity market. Um, so, in terms of, uh, of, of where we sit, as, as Paul said earlier, we, we are in a medium Earth orbit. And what that essentially means is that we are about 8,500 kilometers above the Earth's surface when uh, a geostationary satellite is 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So um, what that means to us is basically we have a lower cost to build. It costs less to build our satellites than it does uh, geostationary satellites. So we can pass that cost on to our customer and reduce their delivered cost and essentially reduce their cost to serve their end customers and making it available to all. Um, the, the, the second aspect that, that we have in that orbit is the fact that we're being closer to the Earth. It takes less time simply just to beam up the service up and down. So in terms of that less time, it's about a quarter. So we are sort of four to, four to five times quicker uh, than anything uh, that is currently delivered today in, in, in the satellite world. And that is, in all honesty, it, it, I'd like to say there's a lot of trickery around it. That, that latency bit is pure physics. Right? There's, there's nothing, uh, it, it's just about where we are and, and, and where we sit in terms of the, in terms of the orbit. So you'll see a number of satellites up there. So, so we have eight satellites up in orbit today. We launch our satellites in batches of four. Again, this is something that, 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 that we benefit from. Uh, in in a, a sort of traditional satellite environment, uh, the, the, the satellites are launched one at a time. So we launch four at a time. 
So we launched our first four in, in June uh, last year. We launched our, our second four in uh, June this year, and we have another four due to launch uh, at the 18th of, on the 18th of December uh, this year. And hopefully, uh, uh, everyone will be watching that diligently on on the on the live feed that, that we have. So going back to, to latency and why is latency important and what does it do? Um, and I've, I've, so we've got a, I've got a simple uh, demonstration of really of, of the O3B service compared to uh, geostationary service. So, so this is, um, don't ask me why, don't ask me how, but this is about buying a Hawaiian shirt from Amazon. I'm not going to sort of go into who came up with the idea, but, but it, 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 it demonstrates uh, sort of, I guess, the, the benefits that, that we see of O3B. And so this is about purchasing that shirt online. So, so what you'll see actually is, is uh, on the right with the O3B, we're slightly behind in terms of the typing. So, um, but we'll catch up. So on the O3B side, we're done. On the geostationary side, the, 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 the shirt hasn't even come up yet. So we're seven seconds in here, yeah, and, and, and we're done. So fiber-like speeds, and so still the shirt hasn't come up. We're still, we're still waiting. And just imagine if, if you're a user of, of, of this technology, the frustration that, that, that you get from, from not being able to access things. And, uh, and so it's, it's finally done, it's finally finished. Um, but uh, we sort of then get on, on to the other elements of latency and things that you, you, you can and can't do. Um, and and if, if, if we sort of look at things that latency enables in terms of applications, so transactions as, we, as we've seen there, ERP systems in an enterprise environment, video, um, and, and a whole load of uh, con consumer products. Online gaming is, is another one. Um, and with sort of the growth of, of those markets, this is something that, that is now accessible and it's getting accessible uh, for all. So, um, in terms of then of, of, of how does it work, so one of the benefits of, of us being in, in our medium Earth orbit and, and closer to the Earth is, is the latency, and, and, and we clearly see that here today. Um, the, with the latency also comes some complexity as well. Um, essentially, our satellites are going around the Earth every six hours, so you are seeing, uh, if you stay in one place and you look up 8,500 kilometers, as I'm sure we all do, uh, then, and you stay there all day, you will see the satellite pass overhead four times in the day. So what that essentially means is, is we have to have a handover between, from, uh, in order to operate continuous service to our customer, we have to hand over from one satellite to the other. And this creates a slight complexity in our system, and, but uh, and, and we'll sort of see how this, uh, how this manifests itself. But ultimately, uh, our customers do not experience any break in service as a result of uh, as a result of our handover process. So I'm going to quickly run through that now and, uh, about what that is. Um, and as a result of having handover, clearly each customer needs needs two antennas. Um, and on the, the gateway side, so delivering into the internet, we need two antennas in, in, in our gateway sites as well. And these antennas move, so they track satellites. So each of them is a, a tracking satellite. So on here, you, you can see that the far left gateway antenna is connected to the satellite and the customer terminal here. And as we move through the pass, so the setting satellite and the rising satellite coming on board. So the rising satellite, um, the gateway picks up the rising satellite and the satellite picks up the customer terminal. And then as, as we're coming through, the data is then sent up from that terminal and down to, to the gateway. So we have two connections on at the same time. Here. And this, this lasts for about 20 to 30 seconds, and at which point in time the break is handed over, and so the setting satellite goes to another customer, and, it can, and, and the cycle continues. And you multiply that by the number of satellites we've got, and the number of beams that we've got, and you remember we have 10 customer beams on each satellite, we have 
eight satellites currently up there. So this is what that looks like. So you can see the, see the satellites around the Earth there. And, and, and so the, the first satellite picked up the gateway, and then the customer beam, and then the second, uh, and then the second satellite will, will come uh, pick up the gateway again, and the customer beam again. The gateway beams are all orange, and the customer beams are all in white. Yeah. The white switch light up. So we then add, add in the 10 customer beams. And we then add in 10 customer beams for every satellite. And I think, as, as Greg Weiler very aptly said um, earlier, um, it's not nuts if it's not big. And so the O3B, we, we've sort of got 12 satellites. We're, we're up and ready with 12 satellites. Our business isn't around 12 satellites. We can fit 120 satellites in the orbital slot we've got. And, uh, and so for us, it's purely about meeting demand. And, uh, and so the demand there, we just keep launching satellites. We, we, we keep going and keep providing the world the, the connectivity uh, that, that it needs. Sounds like a strange question, but with such a low orbit, isn't there a danger of gravity moving your satellites out of orbit? <coughs> no, no, not, not at that, not at that orbit. Or, um, and and, and this, we do have to make some minor adjustments. So each satellite does have some some thrusters on it, um, and so yes, it, it, occasionally we'll, we will have to make some adjustments. But they're very minor, and, and you don't need a lot of fuel because there's no gravity, right? So so any minor adjustment is uh, uses up the negative amount of fuel. So. That's a bit about how O3B works at a, at, a, at a very high level. I then get on to a bit about our market and, and, sort of, uh, and, and our customers as well. Um, but before I sort of do that and, and, and before, before we get into sort of the, the, the customer side, I just want to set out sort of some, some market dynamics about what we've seen in the market since O3B started. So we started in, in, in 2007. So the idea uh, of O3B came from Greg in, in Mr. Dick's uh, uh, sitting room and by the fire up in, up in St. John's Manor. Um, and so from that point in time to, to where we are today, I just sort of want to highlight some, some sort of things that, that have happened in the market to suggest that um, the, 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 sort of the world of data is, is increasing and the demand for data is increasing exponentially. So, in 2008, we had download, we had hard drive, we had classroom, we had laptop. Now, we have streaming, we've got cloud computing, we've got online and, and e-education, and we have smartphones. And that's in the six years since O3B started to where we are now. Um, additionally, we've got companies that didn't even exist in 2008. None of these companies existed in 2008, so Facebook, WhatsApp. Dropbox. All this has happened in, 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 in the lifespan of O3B. So we've need, we need to stay relevant into our marketplace as well. And so and, and, and how we see that play out in terms of the in, in terms of the sort of demand and, and, and how how the picture and, and, and the the requirement for data increases. So um, there, there's going to be a 40% increase in demand. Um, and, and well, in, in internet users between uh, 2014 and 2016. So, the medium of which people are accessing the internet is changing as well. So, uh, well, this data taken of last year. So, last year there were 17% of, um, of internet uh, connectivity via mobile devices. In 2025, this is going to change to 80%. The number of devices are going to increase as well. Um, so we've sort of gone from, uh, I guess, in 2008 um, to sort of uh, GPRS connectivity and just getting into 3G. We're now getting into uh, sort of smartphones, tablets, 4G as well. And, and on the 4G side, uh, we're seeing that by the end of 2017, it's just going to be just under a billion um, 4G connect connections which is an incredible uh, amount of data. We, we sort of have a term for it in, 
in O3B and um, we've obviously put some marketing spin on it, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll announce it here. We just call it big data. And, and, and that's, that's as scientific as we've got around it. It's big data. Because uh, we're just seeing all of the, all of the predictions for, for, for data. They just keep correcting themselves. Every quarter an analyst comes out with more information about how, um, about how, the, how the data world is, is going to increase. And that, for us, is an enormous opportunity, an exciting opportunity. Um, because for us, that, that, that is essentially what O3B is about, is about <coughs> making that connection, about making the internet accessible for all. So I then go on to, 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 to our customers. And so, um, uh, and, uh, sort of a bit about um, what we've done so far and, 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 and our sort of model and what we're, what we're looking to achieve. So, as, as Greg and, and John said earlier in, in, the, um, in the presentation and in, in the video earlier, it, our, our, uh, our sort of um, the ethos and, and the beginnings of O3B came about by um, the problems that they were having in, in terms of connectivity in Rwanda. Um, and still today, that is at the core of our business. So uh, the core of our business is connecting the unconnected in the developing world. And if, if I sort of look at the example here, so, so this is uh, Timor Telecom. So they are the incumbent uh, telco operator in, in Timor Leste. And they, they came to us with, with their problem. Their problem was that they were paying a huge amount of money for a very poor internet connection service through, uh, through geostationary. And as a result of paying so much money, uh, they had a very select number of customers, and, and that, customer, that customer base was primarily focused on the enterprise market. Um, and so, what we have done with, uh, with Timor Telecom now is provided, um, as, as we've drastically reduced their, their, uh, their cost to connect um, the, uh, the, the people, and as a result, you know, they've started launching services which, which they didn't launch before. So consumer services and, and really getting getting connectivity out to the population. So 3G, uh, and this one down here for 100 megabits for, for, for $10. And that's something that they couldn't do before. And that's something that open b has enabled. And so what happens as a result of it is that you then increase your... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, we're just doing a comparison with JT. Yes, you, every, everyone wants $10, right? For, 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 for their hundred and eight. Yeah. Um, and so, just, just sort of on that, and I, I've, got a, I've got a quick sound bite from, from the customer in terms of his experience and, and, what, and, and, and what he sort of sees now in terms of, uh, in terms of the improvement that O3B has, has given him. The, the, the satellite solution from O3B, the new satellite solution from O3B, is comparable uh, and it's competitive against um, the submarine cable solution from Top of Stuff. Latency, definitely latency. Um, because latency allows us to, to provide more services and allows us for each application to increase their throughput. So we have an effort um, downstream to, 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 to O3B of 3G networks that can allow access to 21 megabit per second per user. But with the geostationary set satellite, we cannot achieve that, that, uh, that capacity. Uh, so O3B allows us to increase the throughput per user, which allow a better quality of experience on, on the internet. It's so, so much better. Uh, and allow us to do so much, so much more from the internet after the L3B uh, has has um, put in place. That uh, it's almost hard now to understand that we could live with the internet with, uh, as the service was was before. So uh, I think I mean. Obviously, we paid him a huge amount of money to, 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 to save things like that. So, so that, that was money well spent. Um, but um, no, I mean, so, so, so that, that, that testimony about how O3B has, has, has changed their business. And, and look, we, we've picked on one example there. We, we've, got, we've got a dozen examples of, 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 of sort of 
uh, the, the difference we're making. So, for example, one of our first customers was was a customer in, tele, in, in the Cook Islands, uh, a small bunch of islands, um, basically in the middle of nowhere, um, but sort of near New Zealand um, would probably be the best way to describe it. Um, and, uh, and beforehand, before the sort of O3B, they had a similar similar experience, and as a result, there were a select number of people that were accessing the internet and had connectivity. So when O3B, um, we, we 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 started the service up with with uh, Telecom Cook in uh, April this year, um, and uh, and they were one of the first customers to come up and and uh, we, uh, Sort of re remember seeing some of the some of the footage there, and I, I, I was saying to the guys earlier, I should have really put it up here. But you, you see people for the first time watching YouTube, never seen YouTube before, right? Because they they just haven't had haven't had that capability, and and you get people sort of looking around the back of the the, the computer, looking for the wire where it's plugged in, and think things of which is. <coughs> So we, we, we go from that sort of developing world and developing environment more into the, the, the sort of enterprise world. And uh, so we, we have a product that is focused on, on the cruise industry. So we've been working with Royal Caribbean, who I think they are the, now the largest cruise, cruise operator in, in the world. Um, and this has been around uh, connecting their, their sort of state-of-the-art vessels, I don't know whether anyone's seen this vessel on the news in the last uh, couple of weeks, it's been over in, over in Europe and now it's, uh, now it's in the US. Um, but essentially O3B has been at the forefront of connecting the, the Royal Caribbean ships and, and really these big cruise ships. And when I say big, I, I, you're essentially sharing your holiday with six and a half thousand other people. Um, uh, I'm not, I haven't been on a cruise myself, but uh, I, yeah, I, <laughs> exactly. So th this is a bit about what, what we've done with, with Royal Caribbean, and, and this isn't this isn't something that we've done. This, this is this is a Royal Caribbean uh, reel. Introducing Quantum of the Seas, the most technologically advanced ship ever to sail. Quantum amps up the guest experience for the except context got this grandmas and geeks this isn't just a ship it's a smart ship how smart six ways to sunday smart six ways that will blow you away and blow alternative forms of vacation travel out of the water the days of getting away from it all on a vacation are long gone guests expect to be connected to their social networks their media their jobs to each other and that's what you get with Quantum of the Seas Smart Connect capabilities. Quantum of the Seas operates with unprecedented bandwidth using satellites launched with a tech partner, O3B Networks. These satellites do not send out a broad signal, but beam directly to the ship. Revolutionary. That is the bandwidth provided. How much bandwidth? More bandwidth than every other cruise ship in the world combined. Wow. Letting you upload photographs to Facebook and videos to YouTube. Tweet, Skype, stream movies, connect with friends and family on board anywhere. Even play Xbox Live with gamers worldwide. This isn't just an upgrade, it's a quantum leap. Super smart. Quantum changes everything. So that, uh, and, and so in terms of O3B and, and of where we are today, so, so we are now currently on three of the Royal Caribbean ships. Obviously, I have brochures at the back for everyone uh, to, to, to go and sign up. Um, so, so, um, so it, it sort of just gives you a, 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 a sort of instant on, on how O3B could, could really add value into something which we sort of take for granted and, and, and uh, having never been on a cruise line, I, I don't know about the, about sort of the, the, the current connectivity. Um, but what, what I do know is you pay $50 uh, for half an hour's usage and you're sharing between your five and a half, six thousand other people, three megabits. So uh, with the O3B service, we're delivering in there now 500 megabits of service on tweet ship. So we then go in, into the, um, the mobile world, and for us, um, the, the 
mobile players, um, their the, sort of problems aren't necessarily about um, the the urban areas where where we can all get 3G uh, and, and 4G connectivity. Their real pain points come in, in the rural areas and, and where um, and, and basically where where microwave can't get to and where fiber can't get to. And these guys, at the moment, um, in, in a lot of the countries, take Brazil for example. These guys have a, a universal service obligation to provide rural connectivity. And today they can't make their business case work. So they're paying fines. And, and every year they build that fine into their business case and they just keep paying it. Um, but now we're, we're at a point where we can actually make them make money uh, from this rural connectivity um, using the O3B service. And so we can we can see and see sort of the challenges along the on the uh, in the middle in terms of rural connectivity and, and what O three B can deliver. And so again, this is uh, this is a customer of ours, uh, Digicel in, in Samoa, um, and about their experience of, of, of rolling out O three B into their network. O3B is a new Digicel Pacific partner, and so far Digicel, Samoa, and O3B are developing a very good business plan and providing a bandwidth gateway to link and put Samoa on the global networking map. For now, we are connected on O3B, and uh, we are doing this conversation over the Skype, and you can see that it is reliable in terms of uh, quality. There's no drops, there's no latency, and it's very clear. The, uh, the customers are experiencing a difference. Uh, there is definitely there is a case in low latency, high data speed, and quality in providing the data. Uh, the customer satisfaction is really something that uh, we are very happy with O3B. Uh, what services O3B is providing us, what quality of services is providing us, is actually impacting very well into our business. Okay. And then finally, O3B is playing is, is, is the is the oil and gas market, and, and really for, for us a, a sort of key part of that are the deep water the deep water rigs, rigs that, that don't have connection today, and what well, they do have connection via again via traditional satellite, and, and these rigs are physically taking data reels off, and they're, so they're flying in a helicopter every day to the rigs, and they're putting the data reel on onto the helicopter and flying it back, um, and so. Essentially, the, the, the challenges, all additional challenges associated with uh, with the uh, with the oil rigs. So, the, the oil rigs need to be constantly connected for a number of reasons. One is time is money. Um, th these things are pumping out 100 million plus of oil every day, um, and it costs up to two to three million dollars a day to operate these things. Um, additionally. As part of the Deepwater Horizon uh, disaster a couple of years ago, the, the, there's some fairly strict health and safety rules. So now all, all these rigs have to be connected. If you're not connected, you shut down. If you shut down, the opportunity cost, $100 million plus, two to $3 million a day, it, it costs a lot. Additionally, um, their, their applications just don't work. They don't work because of the latency. We sort of talked about it before in terms of the ERP systems and, uh, and, and other systems on board. And so I'd, I'd sort of build, build all this out, but it, it's saying more of the same. And so th this is a study that, that we've done with, uh, with a leading op, um, uh, oil and gas uh, producer. And it basically shows, uh, without sort of getting into the table too much, it basically shows that O3Bs nearer to terrestrial internet than it is geostationary, all of the things that, that we sort of talked about earlier. Um, so, in terms of O3B and, and where we are now, so, so we have uh, currently uh, 14 customers up and live on our network. Um, those customers are, are, are drawing more traffic um, than, uh, than they ever thought possible. With, with, with those 14 customers, we now uh, doubled the capacity of four of them, um, and, uh, and, and the rest are coming back for more. We have gone from the idea of, of Greg and John in, in, in St. John's Manor to a company of 150 people in seven locations around the world. Um, 
and uh, and I think to, to sort of to, to, to come back to it um, and uh, and Viner's um, comment from, from Ariane Spass on the on the video, uh, we are living the dream, and I, I sort of look at it personally and and. I sort of look around the organisation. I'm working. I'm very lucky to work with some of the most inspirational people I've, I've ever worked with, and and to sort of be part of that, and and to and to sort of see the whole thing come through to, to where we are, and the excitement about the future is, is something that that uh, yeah fills me with a lot of excitement. Um, but I think at, at, at the upshot of it all is is that we are a Jersey company, right? I mean. We've said all this and we've seen all, all, all the things here today. This is, I mean, we are Jersey based. We, we, are, we, we are under the radar, as, 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 as Paul said earlier, but I think uh, but throughout the company, we're absolutely proud to be Jersey. And, um, and so, yeah, I think now is our time to break that cover. So, uh, Charles is our commercial manager, I'm in the legal department. Uh, I don't have the marketing budget behind me that he does, so my slides are a little more basic. But um, I actually uh, was working with more on those ends across the road. I came to Jersey in uh, September 2007, um, just before the financial crisis hit. And then in uh, September 2000, and, well, November 2009, I formally joined O3B. And I started doing O3B's legal work through more on uh, early in the spring. And just looking back, we worked on emergency bridge financing to get the company through to its <coughs> next bigger equity investment. And we raised 12 and a quarter million dollars uh, from existing shareholders. And uh, really, probably 10 guys employed in the company. And uh, while we were waiting, there's a quote on the wall back there, which I saw, I thought I would include it. It's from Nelson Mandela. He says, it, it always seems impossible until it's done. And so that made me think back to that first <coughs> transaction I worked on. And from that point, you know, four, seven years later, we now have a total of uh, 17 corporate entities with three formal local branch offices across 12 jurisdictions, employing over 150 staff and running funds of 1.5 billion. You know, you, it was just impossible back then, and I think this is the important message for this room. It was impossible to think that we would be here seven years later. You know, and we didn't do it all at once. We, we took one crisis at a time, and each one was an existential crisis. But, but you muck in with the team, and you do it, and you solve the next one, and you keep going, and you don't stop. And, and, you, and you get to the point today where I can sit here and have goosebumps at <coughs> what we've achieved. And, and so, you know, I don't... Well, we were a bit worried about the relevance, perhaps, of our experience because the satellite industry is typified by huge upfront capital costs. You know, and once you get the money in, you then spend a couple of years rolling out the project. But this, it's just extra zeros. The transactions are the same. The issues are the same. You're fighting time.